welcome back to the channel everybody hope you're all doing well out there well as you just saw in the video I was just snow blowing we got our first I'd say substantial snowfall for the year uh, pretty late in the season we're January 19 20 today I think we got it over the course of the last day or so and uh, we got about seven or so inches came down uh, over the period of day and then evening basically I had to do a couple cleanups you can see everything's nice and covered in white. Not too much to complain about, really, considering it's this late in January and this is our first major snowfall. You might be able to see in the background here, I have the loader to the Mahindra 2638. There's the backhoe. About the only place in the yard I have that's fairly level to, uh, to be able to park it temporarily while I use the snowblower. Well, as you can see here on the 2638, I've got the snowblower mounted now. And this uh, Mahindra 2638 has a mid PTO. Now I probably could have got the, I'm sure I could have got the rear mount snowblower. I have quite a bit of snowblowing to do around here and for me it just didn't seem to make practical sense. I'm new to the tractor scene so for me also wasn't quite sure, hadn't really tried either method out, didn't really know the, the advantages, pros and cons I guess you'd say between the front mount, rear mount and in my mind it just seemed to make sense to be driving forward and looking ahead. The downside to that obviously is that you do lose the loader and that kind of can limit me in terms of what I want to do unless I can obviously take it on and off. It's not a big deal to take off the loader on the Mahindra 2638. It uh, takes a little practice when you don't do it all the time. I only, you know, maybe four times I've done it in the two years I've owned this tractor. And it's just, if you don't do it all the time, sometimes it can be a little nerve wracking for if you're new at it, like I am. So. I did manage to get it off, didn't damage anything, uh, getting it off and getting it on are two different things and we'll tackle that later. For today though, as you just saw, I was doing some snow blowing and uh, when I got right down towards the end of the day basically, it just stopped th throwing snow. Now on this Mahindra 2638, I do end up going through quite a few shear pins. And, uh, you know, the shear pins on the blower here are uh, obviously made to break so you don't damage anything. There's two different shear pins on this. Let me show you here. I'll get the camera turned around. So this is the uh, Mahindra. This is a 60 inch. I got snow all over it here. Mahindra implement. And this is a six do logger. The uh, center here. And as I said, there's a subframe here that mounts underneath your tractor. This does is disassemble. There's a pin over here. You pull the pin on each side and you can take this head off, disconnect the hoses, obviously. That allows you to keep the subframe on and I could put the loader back on and continue to work. So that's, I guess, a good thing. Um, it makes it a little bit easier, although, you know, pulling two pins, one of them's right here. And then there's another one in the back and I'll show you where that is. Basically where it goes to the hitch that so there's the back of it as you can see there's another pin that goes through right there that's the back of the subframe and then down in between here I'll show you where the mid PTO mounts right here that's the mid PTO you can see it's a little oily under here I discovered a leaky line hose line last summer wasn't quite sure where it was I think I've got it figured out and as soon as we get better weather conditions and I can Get to that i'll get it. it's not a serious condition but it's something i gotta address at any rate so getting back to this basically on the mahindra 2638 there this is the uh i'll show you the model number on this one too just in case anybody's got this one this is the 700 624-2 it's made in canada i don't know if you can see that this camera's um camera app i'm using for some reason doesn't like to focus too well that's the mahindra model 700 624-2 and I believe this is, and so what happens is uh, you can see there's two shear pins right here. There's one here, that's for this auger. And then there's another one down here. Same deal, it's covered in snow here. There's the other one. Now those break quite frequently. And that's because you know, if I had a paved driveway and it was nice and smooth and no rocks or anything, it probably wouldn't go through any. But unfortunately on my dirt road, it's just unavoidable. Um, I've even broke shear pins on a chunk of ice occasionally, so it's, you know, obviously better to replace a bolt than to have to do damage. As a matter of fact, I noticed at one point I did some damage to one of my augers here. It's in the snow, but you can kind of see it's kind of tweaked, kind of bent right here. 
and I don't know if I can dig it out, but basically it became unwelded right here. Uh, I'm going to have to do some repair work on that. Not a big deal. I can straighten that right out and weld it back up again, but obviously I hit something. This one too has got like a little whack knife. I'm not sure. This was used, the snowblower, when I bought it. It had a few hours on it, and uh, it had uh, it was in good shape. So I, I, I'm not claiming the previous owner did any damage to it, but it had been used, so there was uh, some use to it. Uh, the second shear pin, those, those, so those two shear pins are the ones that are most common. I break those quite frequently. I, I think this last snowstorm, I probably broke uh, three of them. Um, and the, but at the end, uh, usually when you break one, the other one will continue spinning, and then you'll still throw snow out the chute. Uh, but last night, it was the first time I noticed that I had the auger on, and it was spinning, but nothing was coming out at all. So I decided it was getting dark and late, and I just thought I'd take it, look at it the next day. This is it, the next day. So I took the snow that was packed in here. It was quite a bit packed in here. Obviously, I was just pushing, and it wasn't going anywhere. And I, as I said, there's these are the two shear pins here. So you've got, for this model, the 106443, and these are uh, 10 nylon insert lock nut 5 16ths, and those are the ones that will go on the shaft here. And then you've got these 105627 shear bolts. These are considerably smaller, and they look to be, uh, I'm going to guess, maybe quarter inch. And I think that's metric, actually, which would make sense coming out of Canada. So I hadn't replaced the second one yet. I've replaced a bunch of these over the course of the last couple of winters. I've been using it, but I've never had to. This bag is actually brand new. It isn't even opened up yet. And it's because I'd never broken one until now. So when I initially got these and I had looked at this, I just looked at, let me see if I can get in here and show you. I saw this bolt here. Now this bolt goes all the way through the shaft right here. I got my finger on it again. I, focusing the best but I think you get the idea that this bolt goes through this shaft right here and that locks this collar on to this propeller right here so I always thought that that was the shear pin however I just discovered this morning it's not although it sure could shear that is not considered the shear pin the shear pin is actually goes through that's these little ones here the 105627 and those go see here Hold on, that little flange right there. You can see I have it unaligned right now. So when I line it up, just put the bolt through there. And that's your shear pin for this. And I'm, I'm assuming that just a rock got through there and, and broke it off. But like I said, I haven't had to replace one back here yet. What kind of threw me off is these bolts look actually a little long to work back here, but actually that's the actual right one. So I'm going to go ahead and get this package broken open here and we'll go ahead and get that bolt changed. That'll be uh, taking care of the snowblower. I've got one other little project I want to tackle today or at least start looking at. Might be interesting to follow. So let me uh, get this set up here and we'll get started on this replacing this shear pin. Okay, let's try it out. All right, well, I took care of that problem. As you can see, I had a little issue with the uh, snow getting plugged up in the chute here. When I parked it last night, obviously it wasn't throwing snow and it got all frozen up inside. Had to dig it out but other than that it's working good love the snow blower as you can see i've got quite a yard here to do we've got all this area plus almost a quarter mile long road so we definitely put this into work and really even though I prefer not to use it it's nice to have when we do so the next thing 
I'm going to have an issue with, as I was mentioning earlier, is now that I have the snowblower taken off and my loader sitting over there, I have no way to move my pallets of firewood, which you can see way over there, back to the house over here, because I have my loader over there, and my pallet forks are sitting back over there. So they're not going to do me any good. Unless, of course, I want to go ahead and take the snowblower off, but we have snow coming in another day or two, so I need to be ready for it. And as I mentioned previously, I really don't like to take the loader off. The problem I have is with the glass right here, you've literally got a few inches of space between the loader arm and the glass. And being new at it, and, or you know, a rookie, I guess you'd say, I just, uh, you know, don't mind doing it in practice and learning how to do it, but one of the big suggestions they give you is to make sure you have a nice, flat, hard level surface. In my interpretation, that means a good paved or concrete area. I don't have one, so I make do with what I have, and that's what makes it a little bit more complicated. Maybe we'll fix that this summer for a pad and try to re re relieve or resolve that issue. But for now, I was thinking be nice if I could figure out how to put my pallet forks onto the back of my tractor here, where my weight is. I did a video of this Harbor Freight Quick Attach 3-point hitch. It was one of the videos, unfortunately, lost on the, well, not lost, but is on the hard drive that's hopefully being recovered, and I can do the, re, uh, do the video on that. I don't have one, and I wasn't going to do another one, so... We'll wait and see if we can retrieve and if they can recover that video and I'll go ahead and release that. But in the meantime, as you can see, I have on here a concrete weight. Now these concrete weights, I really like it. This is a 500 pound. Let me knock some of the snow off of here. This is a 500 pound concrete weight. And when I don't have the backhoe on here, it really makes a big difference. Even though on my Mahindra 2638, I do have loaded tires, loaded with the... Uh, they call sugar water, beet juice, whatever you want to call it. So I believe that's 700 pounds of wheel. So even with that weight, this 500 pound weight made all the difference. Even if I have the bucket on the front of the loader and I'm picking stuff up and I don't have the backhoe on it because when I first got the tractor, I didn't have the backhoe. And I was trying to do work in the yard and it was really difficult to do. Even with loaded tires, I found myself getting... A little sketchy if I got the front end down a little too much, too much weight. Of course, these 2638s are, are made to pick up at least, uh, just over 1,600 pounds at the pin on a bucket. So it's quite a bit of weight, and this 500-pound weight really made a big difference. Now, I'm, it's handy to have when I'm snow blowing, but I could take it off because it's a quick attach. You can see I haven't even adjusted it. It's not, touch, it's not even touching down here. I just put it on there real quick to do the snowblow job. I got to make an adjustment right up here, uh, remove these bolts and just lower this bracket and then it'll lock in. I just can't lock it in, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to take this off for today. And what I'm going to try and do is I know they sell pallet forks that you can mount to a three-point hitch. Now, if I can get the pallet forks on my three-point hitch, that'll resolve my issue on how I'm going to move pallets of wood from a wood processing area back to the house and get the empty pallets back so two options there I've got a pallet fork for the front obviously but it doesn't have the pins on it to mount back here so if I can figure out how to adapt three pins to my current pallet forks I'll be able to use my pallet forks if not I'll have to buy some they're not too expensive I found some they're you know maybe a few hundred dollars or, or so and I don't need anything fancy just need something to pick up a pallet of wood and it'll be a nice tool and a nice accessories I have on the tractor. And it'll just help resolve that one issue I have with not being able to pick anything up while I have the snowblower on. I'm going to grab the pallet forks and we're going to drag them over here. I'll get this weight taken off. And we're going to see if it's even possible. I'm not sure it is. I'm going to see if the pins could even line up on it. So stay with me here. We're going to see if we can make it a set of pallet forks that are made to go on the front end of the loader adapt to three-point hitch. No 
Okay. You can see I just took the block off. I didn't want to haul it back to the garage uh, just to find out that it's absolutely nothing, no way it's going to work. I'm, I'm going to haul it back now because now that I look at it, I'm, I'm thinking I might be able to make something work. I'm not sure, but that's my challenge. That's my goal. If I can make these pallet forks work back here, then that'll be a big help for me being able to at least do a little bit of work more than not having the loader on the front. So let me, I got it kind of hooked on here. Let's see if I can just pick this up and we'll bring it back to the garage and we'll see if we can uh, make some adapter pins. Well, that's interesting. Obviously that's not gonna stay like that, but you can see the, uh, you can get the idea. You see what, I don't have it hooked on anything. It's just picking up by this top bar right now. I'm just gonna use that to get it back to the garage, but that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure I can put some pins in there and make that work, but let's go take a look at it and see what we can do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take these off. I don't need these hanging around. I'm trying to make it adapt. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this adaption. Okay, after putzing around with this thing for a few minutes, I think I have a plan here. So it just so happens, so as you can see, this here is my pallet forks. I've taken the forks off temporarily just to uh, try and figure out how everything's going to fit together. <clears throat> so what I've figured out so far is that my initial plan was I was going to put pins in the three locations. One here, one at the top, and then one obviously over there. And be able to just come in and use this as a regular three-point hitch quick connect um, but what I've discovered is that this fits my Harbor Freight quick attach you can see down here this is skid steer quick attach and you can see the hook right in here right down here that your pin would normally count, mount to just so happens to fit nicely where the pin comes down for the three-point hitch attachment on on the attachment right here. You can see if you're familiar with these attachments. They hook up here, and then you just uh, push the pin down, and the pin locks it in, and that's what holds it in. So you can see this Harbor Freight hook right here matches perfectly to this side where it hooks, and it also matches to the other side. So what I did... See right in there, and they sitting that's sitting flush, that's sitting right on the weight is right on. I'm moving back a little bit here, and I can show you that's basically kind of what we got going on. See, this is where the kids here quick attach would normally attach. Well, the hooks so happen to go in now, they don't fit perfectly, so in other words, I can't just push this back up, it, it, it locks right up there, so I got to pick it up and actually put it in, but that's fine bigger one was the bigger issue was this top one now if, earlier I mentioned that my tractor weight I needed to adjust this so I figured I'd take the bolts off of it and adjust it down and what I discovered was that if I adjusted this down and I haven't tried it with the tractor weight but I believe that'll make the difference right there hopefully and then I set this in place and I'm going to try and do this with one hand this is pretty heavy here pick it up oh. <laughs> Not that much. Whew. Okay. <laughs> All right. So so I can drive in. Assume my pal forks are on the ground. They'd have to be picked up a little bit, so I'll have to put some spacers under them to get them up off the ground. But that's not a big deal. So then I can I should be able to drive back until I get it into the slots here, and then the top one you can see. 
it's just hitting a little bit right here but if i pick it up i can push it up i just pick it up a little bit it actually goes right over now what i discovered was right now all the weight from this headboard right here on the three on the uh, pallet forks is now resting on the pins down here right 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 down in here and the other good thing too is i can also lock these in so let me show you what i mean here you can see the harbor freight and i can actually lock them right in there so they're locked right in so that's a nice fit the only thing that's hitting is right here it's barely hitting and when it hits right there it's actually tilted a little bit forward and that's not going to be good for trying to pick it up but what i discovered is if i pick it up just a little bit now i have the weight on down here and all i've got to do is figure out how to stop or how to um, normally there would be a pin sitting in here what i'm thinking is because when i pull this forward where i've got this adjusted this this hook right here now i don't have the nuts in there yet i just took it off to play around with it but you can see it's just barely touching right here and when it touches right there it actually locks on and it's pretty straight and at that point right here where it's touching up here it's actually touching in all three point all three points so right now the weight would be distributed evil evenly because as i pull this forward and just lock it on right here that locks all three points so it distributes the weight so that's perfect right there the only other issue I needed to figure out was how was I going to stop this from locking around walking around now remember when you have your fork pallet forks on here all the weight is is extended out obviously to the end of your fork so it's out here some way away from there so it's actually pulling down this whole headboard would be pulling down from the weight so I've got to figure out how to stop it from going beyond here obviously it's rubbing right there and if i had a load of weight on it it would it would probably maybe it wouldn't go past there maybe it will what i'm going to do is i'm just going to weld on a little piece of metal on the back side of this under here up in here i'm gonna i've got some scrap steel here this is i think 3 16 and what i'm going to do is cut myself off a piece i'm just going to weld a piece up in here and I think what that's going to do is, when this thing wants to pull forward, if I have a good little tab welded up here, that should lock right up on here. And if I can get that to lock up right there and stop and not go any further, that'll be my... That'll work. That'll, that should work fine. That should uh, distribute the weight evenly. It sets it perfectly straight. It'll be a little bit of an inconvenience. I mean, I won't be able to, like I said, I'll have to come in and, and jack up the, and kind of pick them up off the ground or just, you know, manly manhandle them on there, basically pick them up and put them on there. But it doesn't matter. I was looking at, you know, a couple, 300, maybe $500 for a set of new ones. I can easily make these work and adapt them. I only need them for primarily, well, I say only need them for the winter. Like I said before, it's only when I have my, snow blower on the front and I don't have my loader I need a way to move pallets around and whatnot this is going to work beautifully it's getting late today I'm going to stop here I've got the plan in my head I'm going to go call it a day for now and I've been out here most of the day in the afternoon so I'm going to go in for the night and we'll tackle this um, with just a little bit of welding I'll take this off I'll do a little grinding cut off my steel and we'll get that welded on there and i believe that's going to be it i think that's going to work fine matter of fact what i'll do is i'm going to fire up the tractor and we'll just pick this up just to verify i'll lock that on place and then i'll go ahead and pick it up Oops, let me get that set up okay these are pretty heavy And the one downside to this setup is that this uh, hook is going to be right in the way if I want to remove, if I want to remove them.
but I don't want to remove them. Alright, so I don't know if you saw there what was happening. I hope I got that on video. Basically, every time I tried to pick it up, the hook was, was sliding off the end here. That's why I said I'm going to I put a little tab on here to catch this right here. The weight will actually be picked up from here and transferred that way. Um, and this little piece of metal on the back will be basically to hold it in. So that'll be doing a lot, obviously, to hold the weight. But I'm confident I can uh, design something that'll be strong enough. I'm basically only picking up. I know this three-point hitch can pick up a lot of weight. And we'll put it to the test, but uh, I mean, put not put the three-point hitch to the test, but put the pallet forks to the test. But I'm only picking up the loads of wood and a pallet of wood. Probably 500 pounds, I'm guessing, uh, maybe 600 or something like that. So way under what it's rated for. Uh, it's going to work fine. And as you can see, I got everything was able to get locked in so the weight's being transferred to three places basically this spot right here is going to be used to keep it not only to help with the lifting but also to keep it from falling forward so uh, I think it's going to work we're certainly going to give it a try if I can get that to work save me a few hundred bucks for a little bit of ingenuity and some time in the afternoon here and uh, we'll give this a try tomorrow all right I wanted, I wanted to try it out. I got a little uh, antsy, I guess you'd say. I was going to wait till tomorrow morning to weld that on. I'm going to do that. I just figured I'd try it out. I just did a little test here. I just put a shear bolt through there with a chain. Like I said the, the primary of the weight's on this hook right here. But um, a lot of weight's obviously on this chain. It's pulling forward from all the weight here. But I just wanted to verify it works. works great. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So that's what I was hoping for. So what I'll do tomorrow is I will weld that little tab on there. That'll work great. And that pretty much solves my problem with uh, being able to get wood from here across the yard all the way over there to our back door over there. And all in all, it's coming together. So I'm just going to unload this here for tonight. And we're going to come back with the video tomorrow. We'll finish making this more permanent connection. All right.